This pandemic is taking a mental toll on many of us, especially children. CBS 2's Andrea Grimes spoke with the superintendent of White Plains, New York, to learn more about their strategy to help students. How many students are in the White Plains School District? Just about 7,200. 7,200, okay. And, how, and is it, are, are you guys a mix of in person and remote, or how is it, how do you guys have it set up right now? Yeah, right now we're, we're hybrid. Um, we have children who are, you know, our facilities are open every day, children in every day, but they're, they're in different cohorts each day. Oh, okay, okay. So are any of them in full time, or is it still kind of a mix? We do. Yeah, we have some children who are in, you know, all week long um, based on, you know, particular needs. Right. Uh, yeah. Right, okay. All right, so I guess, um, and, and my colleague Tony was saying that you, you're passionate about this topic, um, which a lot of educators are. I guess my question, I don't know if you happen to see uh, Nora O'Donnell interviewed President Biden over the weekend and, and kind of briefly talked about a mental health crisis among our nation's children with everything going on. I guess my main question for you, doctor, is what are you seeing in terms of how your students are dealing with everything going on? Yeah, I think um, like everything else, right, it's sort of a continuum um, in terms of what we're seeing. We're seeing children who, for various reasons, are struggling mightily. Um, we're seeing children who are actually excelling and, and then everything in between. I think the, uh, the key there is to know your kids, um, which is a really important point in being able to identify red flags associated not only with um, difficulties in terms of mental health, um, but also with engagement and academic achievement and, and the like. What do you see with your kids who are really struggling? What do you what do you see, what are you seeing? What are some of the things that you're noticing? Yeah, we're we're seeing all sorts of things. Uh, everything from feelings of isolation to disengagement, um, struggles related to um, stressors at home. Uh, perhaps somebody has been sick or unfortunately lost the battle with with uh, COVID nineteen. Maybe there's fiscal. Um, uh, financial uh, stresses at home and all, all of these things, right? Just like adults, all of these things compound and, uh, and impact children as well. And so one of the things that we talk about is really being mindful um, to the extent that we're able as adults into uh, the stressful situations uh, that our children are actually around and to the extent possible, minimize those situations, um, you know, around our kids. And how does all of this affect their schooling? How does this affect their ability to learn? Sure. So if you're worried about your basic needs, right, your, your everyday basic needs, it makes it nearly impossible to concentrate on anything else. Um, and while that might seem dramatic, right, basic needs, shelter, food, love, um, you know, for, for some children, you know, th those basic needs have been shaken or, or are, are faltering in, in some form or fashion. And we in the schools are doing everything that we possibly can to try and support our families and support our children and keep an eye out um, to identify if there are any concerns that we might be able to assist with. Yeah, and what are some of the things that you guys are, you guys are doing? So here in the White Plains City School District, we partner with um, Andrus, we provide um, clinical health, ser uh, mental health services, um, you know, through the school district in, in conjunction with parents and guardians. Um, it provide it allows children to access services. Um, now they can do it virtually, but but uh, when they're in their buildings, they they can also access clinicians, which is fantastic. We also put um, families in contact with a host of community um, partners here in White Plains who can help support families from everything from after school tutoring. Um, to navigating, uh, you, you know, uh, food insecurity um, and, and everything in between. So what we're really trying to do as a school district is to buttress in all areas that we can um, the families and try and help them move through this pandemic. And I think, you know, um, that's so important to remember. We are still in the pandemic and everything that we're doing to try and normalize life is great, um, but there are some aspects to pandemic living that really can't be normalized all that easy and we have to recognize that and be supportive of our community. And obviously pandemic aside there's always kids who have family things going on there's always mental health things with certain students. I mean how much more would you say it's impacting how many that's the way of saying it are you seeing it a lot more since the pandemic? Can you quantify it at all? 
Yeah, sure. I mean, I think I think quality anecdotally, right? We, we yeah, anecdotally. That, that that stress levels are higher. I mean, I really can't say enough about teachers and support staff members in in all of our public schools all around the country who are not only trying to you know navigate uh, regular academic instruction, but also trying to support their kids, um, build that positive sense of rapport, that the the the, um, the feeling of safety in a classroom, whether it be in person or virtually. And uh, we, we are, you know, we're, we're making sure that we're trying to attend to the child's needs as a child and the human first, right? Checking in, making sure you're okay today before I dive into today's lesson. Um, if I see something that's amiss, connecting, circling back, connecting with the home, connecting with, the, with the, the parent or guardian and seeing what we can do to support. There is no doubt that stress levels are higher right now. I mean, you know, you would expect that. Um, and so what we're trying to do is, is try and reduce them in any way possible, not increase them. Yeah, of course. And as an educator yourself, I mean, what is it, what is it like to see, to see your students, especially over the last year, struggling more than they typically would be? What is it like, what is it like for you and, and your staff? It's hard. Um, it's hard for me as a teacher. Uh, it, it's hard for me as a father um, to see my own children, you know, seven and four years old. Um, contending with what, what I know my children here in White Plains are contending with on a, on a daily basis as well. Um, here's what I will say, though, uh, about our children, and I think this is important. So any kid who's watching this right now, this is for you. Um, they're amazing, and they are pushing through. And do they need help and support? Sure they do, just like adults do. Uh, but I want to say, you know, our kids continuously um, rise to the occasion. You know, folks have asked me, is this a lost year for our children? Absolutely not. These children are surviving and thriving in a pandemic. Um, they are making it happen and figuring out ways to not only continue to learn, but also leverage technology uh, to make sure that they have access to what they need in a whole new way. That's a good, that's a good point, because that's what a lot, of, a lot of parents, a lot of people are wondering, what are the long-term effects of dealing with this? Yeah. It's hard to know um, what, what the long-term effects of the pandemic will be. You know, we look back on other generations who went through pandemics uh, you know, the, the so-called greatest generation was one of those generations. Um, and that was probably the last major pandemic that we saw globally in 1918, 1919. So it's hard to say, but I will tell you this. One of the things that, you know, somebody might assume is that for folks who were growing up during this period of time, resilience may be up. Um, the ability to deal with, uh, you know, difficulty and challenges and uh, problem solve through that may be up. Uh, and so I think that, you know, we should continue to support our kids and, and be positive about what we have been able to accomplish in the last 11 months. It's been huge. Where we were this time last year to where we are today is obviously completely different in what we're able to provide by way of education, um, you know, hybrid, remote, all those things didn't even exist a year ago, um, mm -hmm. you know, where we are. Yeah, no, exactly. So then just the bottom line advice for parents is know your kids really be on top of what they're doing and how they are. That's, that's your main, that's your main uh, piece of advice. Yeah, I think the bottom line advice um, for parents, for all of us is number one, you know, look to minimize stress um, and, and provide support, care, and love first. Um, and then of course, all the support related to school. And if you see something that is of concern, um, definitely feel free to reach out to your child's teacher or contact your child's school schools are very well positioned to either be able to support or bring somebody else to the table that could help support families. We're here for you. Um, so, you know, don't, don't be embarrassed to make that phone call.